And welcome to this system. It's a clean install of Arch Linux version 1903. It's coming from the website that you can visit yourself. Just uh, start typing Arch Linux seed host. That's something you need to remember. And we've downloaded already the official release from the AKG. So if you delete a little bit more here to the back, you have here the, the, the root of the data. And there is the ISO, this is the official one. And at this point in time, there is already a beta version available. And I've downloaded um, the old one because this video is going to be about how to get from the February release to the March release. It's just a rolling release, uh, meaning you just uh, update and then do your stuff. That's basically um, what you do. All right, um, so I've downloaded everything already. Fine, that's done. Super F7 VirtualBox is installed. And um, there are two things. One, you can add a VirtualBox if you have one already, or you make a new one. How do you add one? Well, I have a, a script that makes sure that the content is already available in here in the virtual box. So you have an uh, open a new window. You have a download that I do when I do a clean install. All right, here it is. This is my get started script. It's going to put all these folders with all its scripts on my home directory and also the virtual box VMs. So this is a template either I open this one, extract it, and I have a template ready. But for educational purposes, let's just make one. So we want to make a new, vir a new uh, virtual box. So we're going to call it template. Why template? If you want to try out more things than just this one distro, then it's maybe time consuming to always make the same things we're doing now. Meaning always changing elements. Maybe you just call it other Linux 64 bits, uh, if you prefer that. But uh, let's say it's we're gonna try out Arch Linux, the 12 desktops, soon 13, by the way. Um, we have a template next, and then the recommended size of the memory. So we have 16, so around eight or something like that is okay. 50-50, the host gets something and the guest gets something, right? So um, these days, how do much do we give? Since this is the February release, I'm still gonna give it a 30. You'll see that the March release has a new option in the Calamares to not use swap. And I'll point that later on in the installation and talk about swap. But let's take 30 to be safe. Create, right mouse click, go to the settings, not finished. So check your work again, Linux, Arch Linux, advanced. You can do these things by directional, then it's set, but it won't work. Someday maybe it will. Motherboards, okay, all good. Processor, go up like this, four. CPUs from eight, four to the host, four to the guest. Make sure this is enabled, otherwise INC won't see anything on your virtual box. Acceleration, fine, display. 50-50, sounds good, more or less. This is the problem. You should not put it in VMware. So that's not the point. You need to have VBox VGA. That's the one you need. And then enable 3D. If you do it like this, I get a lot of questions of people. My screen is, what is it, 800 on 600. I can't get it any bigger, right? That's it. VBox VGA enable doesn't really help, but then again, we're not gaming. And that's it. This is my template. We can recheck it. So base memory 84 VBox VGA, and we have a hard disk of 30, and this needs to be empty. Oops. Then we right mouse click it and we clone it. And this time I'm gonna say I'm going to install 19.2, right? February release. I'm gonna mount it. So optical drive, choose disk image. It's already there. 
it's the, in the downloads it's to save us some time. So it came from Seathost. Double clicked it. Oh, cancel. My mistake. Power off. It's on the other screen. But let's do that again. So choose disk image. That's better. And then move that screen over here. Now, too bad since I have already made an, uh, a test video earlier on, all the messages are gone. Meaning, you always see these messages pop up. You need to just read them and click them away. So there are four messages that you will see. You can tick it on and then it will never ever um, appear again. Now what I did now, uh, if you take a look at your keyboard, there's a right control and a left. When you type right control and F for full screen, that's what we're looking at now. And it's booting up its, uh, its ISO at this point in time. So remember control F for a full screen. Then we're ending in, um, well, XFCE. This, you can have a look at it. This is still the look that everything is monochrome. You'll see that the March release, uh, we have taken a choice to change a little bit, a little bit wallpapers. Uh, well, the complete system has been themed and we'll discuss that later in articles. But um, we get this Calamares installer, which uh, we're very proud to be able to, to work with and that we can work with it. I mean, it's free and it, it, you just can, can install a Linux system with it. It's amazing, right? And it helps us and it helps you in your own language. You can choose Francais, Bienvenue, Localisation, etc. So you choose your language and it changes. Now, this is just the Calamaris uh, language. What you probably are more interested in is, well, time zone is the first thing. So if this uh, button is still on New York, well, either you live in New York or it didn't work. So this button behind is a URL going to, to Plasma website. So if there is no connection, if there is no internet, if there is uh, a maintenance of the website, well, your button will be in New York. So just click somewhere and you'll be in the right time zone and make it a game or click it here and choose the region and the zone. Then you go to, whoa, then you can set the system language if you want to, if you want to change something. So when you click on the time zone, things will change, but you can rechange it any way you see fit in here. And then next. Most important is we need to be able to type. In my case is Azerti. But you choose anything you see, all the things are up here and will change with it. You can test it also. We are going to erase the disk. This is the February release and not the March release. So if you've already installed the March release, you will say, hey, where is this pop up? We can't say no swap. You'll see that there are choices, more choices to not get this yellow thing. And that's what I said early on. We here we can actually say, don't use the swap in the version of March. And this is the version of February. So Calamaris is improving and it's all for free. It's just wonderful. So erase disk, this is going to be a swap, meaning if the application, if the operating system says, don't have enough room in my memory, I'm gonna put some stuff in the swap. That's what it's for, basically. Simply put, what's your name? Eric, this is Arco Linux, and that's my password, nobody knows. Login automatically without asking for password. It's an idea. If you're at home, why not? If it's on a laptop that's on the road, maybe not. Use the same password for administrator account. That's entirely up to you. It's more safe to have two passwords or you just say, I always make mistakes. I'm gonna make one password. And then you say next, install, and then you have to wait. Now, <clears throat> Some of these, if you're installing Linux distributions, you see this pop up when there's a new, uh, when, you, when the, the, the ISO launches, right? You see a pop up, welcome to blah, 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 distro. And you 
see links to forums and they talk, they give information about all kinds of things, really. We have we had that in uh, in Arch Labs back in the days, and I've uh, developed it, this this application. I worked on this application. I did not develop it. It's from Manjaro. Copy paste. Work on it. We asked, of course. I get got permission. But basically, all these um, these applications are are minimal. It are restricted within confines of dimensions of um, possibilities to have YouTube in there, uh, bold and anything really. So um, I've chosen not to give you a application to say, hey, this is who we are, but we give you a link. And on a website, I can give you so much more information than I can ever give on a small little application. So do remember, Arc Linux has a lot of information and it's all online and there are lots of websites and every website has a function. That's why it's, it's, it's separated. We can have one huge website where nobody finds its stuff. But here we have divisions already. This is just information about Arc Linux. What is Arc Linux, right? This is information website. And there are other websites like well, when you start reading this, this is the page to read to understand what this project is all about. Arc Linux, Arc Linux D, Arc Linux B. Three projects. All different and it boils down to the, your level of expertise. You start in Arc Linux ISO and maybe move on to Arc Linux D and then later build your own ISO. Because basically it's, it's an, um, well, going to the ALU the Arco Linux University. It's, it's a learning phase that you are going through when you decide to go to jump into the waters of Linux and go and have a swim. Well, you, you need to somebody to guide you. And I hope Arco Linux can be this guide for you that you say, okay, Arc Linux isn't that bad or isn't that difficult. It's just different and, and you need to know a lot of things, okay? But there are phases. You don't need to learn everything today. There are phases, there is time. I see it happening to my own uh, Arc Linux people. I see to the beta testers, you grow into these things. So that's the point. Um, I invite you on a journey, a journey to learn Linux. That's basically it. And we have phases. So the story is not finished tomorrow. It's, it's gonna be years of fun. So let's go to the next website. ArcLinux.com is about learning phase one. And phase one is just say, this is the big ISO, the one I'm currently installing. That's learning about Openbox, XFC, and i3. That's already three desktops. That's quite a lot. And a lot happens during a year. Updates come in, this breaks, that breaks. Then we have fixes. We help you. You want to change something, browsers, you want to clean up your system, you want to have some fun, you want to download stuff. You want to learn more about virtual machines it's all in here and we always say start here that's why it says start here right you just read all these guys and then it's up to you what do you want to know kernel post installation stuff all right so that's uh, another one let's see how the installer is doing okay still time um article next d is then another phase is is going for phases two, three, and not four, and five. So on this website, we um, are talking about Arc Linux D, so working with the Arc Linux D ISO, and then you install XFC. So you made a decision, I wanna have Arc Linux, but just XFC. Then you start learning more about this. Of course, your knowledge that you get here, you can uh, use that in another XFC anywhere, Basically, XFC is XFC. If it's Ubuntu or on, on Susan, doesn't really matter. It's a desktop you're learning. That's, all, that's one of the things I do hope I can, uh, well, I can achieve is that you think out of the box. Read um, tutorials, listen to tutorials, read articles about Ubuntu, doesn't matter. Manjaro, doesn't matter. It's all about the same thing. It's Linux and it's a desktop and you can be helped with any article and video out there. If it's related to your desktop, then it's, then it's fine. 
I've uh, solved so many issues reading stuff on Ubuntu. And I say, okay, that's how it works on Ubuntu. Let's now figure out how it works in, in Arch Linux. That's how I hope you come to see it. So phase two, XFC Openbox i3. So it's separate, each desktop separate, just one desktop on your machine. And in phase three, we, give, we say, okay, now we're going to install any other desktop besides Openbox, besides XFC and i3. And there are lots of fun guys in here, big guys as well. Plasma is a very, um, well, fully or full, fully functional desktop but uh, and of course then it installs a little bit longer because it has a lot of applications that uh, make sure that you can do anything on Linux. So that's all about what does a desktop provide. Budgie for instance is nice but it's actually built on GNOME so you get a lot of GNOME stuff in it. So it's, it's all what you need, what you want and what you need. And that's the point you can choose in Linux. And in Windows and Mac, it's, it's like that. And here you have a choice. You say, okay, you have a basis, Arch Linux, Arch Linux, and then we build up. And then you say, okay, let's build, awesome. Let's build PSPWM. That's why I say the story can be very long. There's lots to discover. And soon there will be Qtile in there. So lots of stuff. Phase four is something else. Phase four, let's open it in a new tab. Has been moved, was here, has been moved. Why? Because it's so many articles that it needed another website because it's, it's essential to our project. We tell you that at Linux B, you can build the ISO that we built, you can build it too, any way you see fit. Meaning you don't want Firefox, well, delete the line Firefox. You do want, um, I don't know, anything really, just check it out. This is building your own ISO. And then phase five is saying, okay, forget about Arch Linux. Let's do an Arch Linux installation. Since Arch Linux is a based for 90%, Arch Linux is just Arch. Okay. And the rest is tweaking, theming, configuration, thinking, making it easy, efficient, nice, beautiful. Okay, that's that's Arco Linux. And this is starting from scratch, going through phases, phase two, three, but then again, you have to decide what do I put on it? What desktop do I want to live in, work with, right? And then the spice up Arch is people then say, okay, now I have this Arch Linux, but I'm missing this and this and this and this from Arco Linux, right? And that's what we call spice up to add spices from uh, Arco Linux. All right, uh, probably the, the, the thing will be finished here. Yes, yes, restart now. Now, actually, the best tip I can give you is don't restart now. You can say done, but click on live user, shut down, and then you have the opportunity to get rid of the ISO that's still in there. Control F. This sometimes happens when he wants to power off. It doesn't power off. Never mind. Everything is installed. So just power him off and click here and say Arch Linux, you're out. So the optical drive should be empty, which means we're going to see straight away our beautifully, beautifully themed. No, not a beautiful themed. This is the old grub, and you'll see in March that there is a new grub. I always forget this is the February release. All right. And an old wallpaper, of course. You'll see the March release has another one. So you have XFCE. And yes, you have also, if you log out, you have also Openbox and i3. That's Arch Linux, right? Choose the big ISO, as we call it, and you'll get three in one, meaning you can switch between it. You can learn and say, oh no, Open box is not my thing, or i3 is not my thing. But then again, a month later, you go back and you say, oh yeah, I'm getting it, I'm getting it, I'm getting there, you know? And the thing is, you have three choices and you keep your own data. The data is the same, browser is the same. I mean, it's it's still the same computer. It's just a different environment, just a different desktop to play around with. All right, that's it.
what do you do prior to anything else? If you do a clean installation, you say, let's run a mirror, right? So mirror is an application reflector that's, by the way, been updated just now. And it's going to check out all the Arch Linux servers. And it's going to rank them and say, okay, the fastest one is that one. And your updates will go faster because that's the net. Oops, let's do first something first. What's interesting uh, always is to do first. Well, let's first talk about aliases. I don't want to forget that. Aliases are there not to make you stupid. Aliases are there to make it efficient. I can start remembering this or I just make an alias. Okay, the same goes for updates. Pseudo Pacma minus SYYU. This is a very important one because when you're in phase five, Arch Linux, the command or the alias update will not exist. Simple. And here is our mirror. I can't remember this, sorry, I can't. And that's why we make aliases, not to make it, um, well, to make it more efficient, to make it pleasant, to make it fun, just mirror, up, done. And now everything is uh, up to date, in the sense that the Arch servers are up to date. And now we are going to, oh, forgot it again, backup scale, do first that. What happens when you do backup scale? Control H. Nothing here. This is going to move, by the way. I found it a bad place to be. Backup scale. Okay, I'm pressing enter. Look at that. Scale backup of 2019 03 08, 8 hours 35. Yep, correct. What's in here? The same thing that's in here. Take Check out alias, then you'll see. Scale this thing, move it over here. This is so important, not in trash. Eh? This is so important for Arch Linux. Everything that we update, the functionality, the theming, the tweaking, everything that should be in your home directory, well, we keep out of your home directory. But we do put it in here, and you decide if you want to have the latest updates in your home directory by typing scale. That's the point. With a backup scale, you've copy pasted, I can do this, Control A, Control C, Eric, and then write a folder somewhere, create folder and Control V, backup. Now, backup scale does it for me, it gives us a hidden folder, so Control H, you don't see anything, but it's there if you want to see what's going to happen, and we're gonna use it in a little while. So, this is situation February. This is the content of scale from the February release. Agreed? Now we're gonna do an update. And since it has been a while, right, a month ago, you'll notice that Arch Linux a little bit more, has a little bit more data <laughs> stream <laughs> than other. He wants to ask me a question here, replace. So if you don't know what it is, I always say yes. Just enter, by the way. Don't have to type yes, just enter, enter. It's total installed 2816, but it only means 43 megabytes more. And yes, again. Now, let's be smart about this. Let's read a little bit. I don't say you need to know it uh, by heart, but some of the things you better know. First of all, if there are Arch Linux names in there, means you've, we've been hard at work. And in this case, we've been hard at work. So a lot of things are coming in. That's one. Then you scroll through, you see ah, Chromium, new Chromium version, fine. Compton, very important for our open box um, and all the um, tiling window managers. So there's new Compton was an article about that. Had to change the Compton conf, which is the configuration file. What else? Big news was the Linux 5.0. 
So we're going to reboot. If you see this thing anywhere, Linux, and then a number behind it, then it means it's it's the your engine has changed. It's like the, the engine of your car has ripped up, been ripped out and replaced with another. So yeah, well, you want to know how does that drive, right? So you need to reboot if you see that. The same goes with system D. If there is an update as well there, you want to see if everything still works afterwards. There are new safety icons. Here is a system D and a system D and surfing icons as well. Well, if everything goes well, each time they give another kernel, they should also give you another virtual box. If of course you use virtual box, then it should come along if they don't forget. That's all I see for now. There might be more important stuff, but hey, I just scanned through it. And in the meantime, we are almost done. What you do is you scroll up and if you see these lines, I hope I, I it shows well that with this space and all, everywhere you see scale, then there's a red flag in your, your hat um, saying, okay, in your mind better, that uh, you need to run later on the command scale because we're updating the configuration of Planky, we're updating configuration of Rofi, etc., etc. So it means you need to run scale and we're there. So let's get the stuff that's in here. This is new. This has been replaced. Some of the stuff has been replaced, not all. Some of it has been replaced. You cannot do two, two things, analyze, but you can always do a backup scale and then analyze. You can analyze now between etc scale and your own folders, which is more tricky but it can be done. So I'm telling you, if you see somewhere scale, type scale. This means the content of etc scale is now overwritten of over, overwrites the content in here. So now you have the latest information of uh, Arc Linux. Okay. What you can do as well now is a backup scale. And now it becomes interesting. We have now the updates from March, right? And we have two folders, the one from February and the one from March. And oops, and then you can say these two guys, right mouse click, compare these two guys. What did Arc Linux change? Well, like I said, we moved the folder. The Arc Linux logo folder is gone. We've deleted it uh, and we've put it in here in the config which is a better place, I think, the .config. What is new? We have a stay rolling version one for 19.2 to 19.3. There is a script to make you rolling. So we're gonna need it. There is a new nice script for to how to create a bonsai tree. There's also the bat and the bat two that we have. So the Arconix logo has been moved to here, to the .config, basically, that's something we can do right now. I'm telling you, you get it, you got it already, and it's true, I got it already, but it's still here, and that's normal because we're not gonna delete anything in your home directory. You can delete Arc Linux logo because you got it here. It's here. It just moved. Then you can become technical. Let's first do something first. Here it says same in melt. Do you want the same thing? See the same things? Maybe you do. But what if we do it like this? Then we see a lot less. And we can just concentrate on the things that are different. These things have been changed February and March. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And then we can go over details and let's do it. Let's make it a long technical video about it. So we changed the GKSUA into Peaky pk execute right he's going to use another command to become the root because it says here open full folder as root so if we have changed that we've changed arconix logo okay fine so we have all these logos there is a new 
Conky. So there are examples for the Conky. There is a new Conky for the clock rings, the Mowgli, TP Troll, TP Troll rings. And then the settings. We've changed something. But remember I said that everything has been mono. Well, we've changed it to Sardi Arc. So there were some uh, people say, hey, why always this mono, why not colors? It doesn't matter really, guys. There are lots of um, icons, just choose. But we've taken the hint and we said, okay, why not choose? Let's take Sarti Arc as default. So it will look different when we reboot. It's a good thing that I closed the application. Doesn't really matter. Super F5, because here's the tip. File, open recent, up. There it is again. So tips, how to work. That's done. That's done. That's done. Open box. I have acquired myself a keyboard shortcut just for me. Super T is going to be URXVT. Remember that our uh, ISOs are in seat host. So suddenly I had to uh, manage a server from uh, SS via SSH through a terminal, well, Termite didn't cut it. So I went to URXVT and it just works as if I'm at home. So I have a specific shortcut for that to have my personal URXVT keyboard shortcut. Then we deleted a lot of stuff in the Chromium uh, plank, so we've made it a little bit uh, less. Um, we have to fix that, that's true. We'll see it later. Hope I don't forget. QT5CT, uh, also here, Sardi Mono Coloro, Colora, we're going to Sardi Arc. And that's all. Again, Super F5. Forgot it, forgot it, forgot it, forgot it. Okay. Let's go from bottom to top now then. So, Sardi Arc, check. Conky Desktop. Um, yeah. This is something specific and special. Some of the applications in here, I don't want to see those applications and Konki was one of them. So if you type now Konki, you just see Konki Zen. But at some point in time, there was this, this, this nasty little application and it had a menu and there was no point to the, having that, that uh, file there, that, that application in the menu. So this is how we do, uh, that's the trick to hide away stuff from your menu. Maybe interesting. There's an article about that as well on articlings.com. Sorry guys, but Vivaldi is from now on the web browser that's as default. X settings XML, the start the arc again. So it's incredible difficult to change everywhere from Sardi Mono to Sardi Arc. We have to think about it where it's in every place there is somewhere a mention of a theme. So we need to change that. I went back from uh, two, it used to be four, a few, maybe a year ago already. I have went back to four. I really need the workspace of four for my development. So if you don't want it, right mouse click, workspace settings and say, I want to have two or something. But it's standard, it's going to be four. Panel, Redshift is in. It's back in, we have a fix for Redshift. It's gonna work. Explain later. Flame shots. It's not installed flame shot, but there is already a reference to it and a reference to Discord, which is our way to communicate. Here as well, Super T, URXVT for XFCE, for OpenBox, for i3, not for i3. That's an exception. And here we have another wallpaper. You see here the Cryptica, etc. Here is the Arco wallpaper. Okay. So we've changed the wallpaper when we boot up. And then full path in title. So we see up here in the Tunar, of course, this is not Tunar. We'll see a full path in here. It's an option that we have added. This is for variety, first run or just settings. Set the wallpaper. I believe we've changed this one for Qtile. So we are working, we will get there. Qtile, we can already set our wallpapers in Qtile, so that's good. Tint to RC, 
Here as well, a mentioning of Monocolora. So sadly, Arc, it's gonna be, it was very tricky to just make this switch between Icon because there are always, um, well, lots of mentions, mention about it. Maybe we should do this talk first because otherwise I'll forget. Why should I do a manual intervention? Where is it? It's in config, it's in plank, it's in dock, it's in launchers, and here is stuff, right? Now, the stuff that's in here, where is my plank? That's this one, okay? These guys, if I say Inkscape is out, poof, there's a file gone. And that's basically why you need to do it manually. He's not going to delete stuff in your computers. And Scal is not going to delete anything. It's going to overwrite if the file exists. So the plank here is now less icons. You see there are less things in the new version in March. Meaning you have to delete it yourself because they're never going to be deleted. So GIMP is out, uh, Genie is out, Peak was out, Chipik is out. I think this is it, not sure. So Chromium, up, Genie, GIMP, Chipik, Inkscape, Melt. Yeah, I think these are the icons that we are using now when we boot up in March, okay? Not that it's important, but just, you know why these elements are so will stay there otherwise because well we're not going to delete with the scale we're just going to overwrite files okay it's time to reboot i think let's restart we have a new linux we have system d a lot of things to look out for new settings and we are booting up First thing I see is I have a yeah, wallpaper, of course, but the first thing I noticed was I have now four workspaces, you see? And you can always say workspace settings, I wanna have two, three, more, you change and it's okay. It's simple. Let's do a final check. PKSYUA, all good. No, because, let's put you here, because what we've done until now was just update. Update means the Arco stuff and the Arch stuff. So this is coming from AUR. It has nothing to do with Arch Linux and nothing to do with Arch Linux. It's coming from a website. You can Google it, Arch Linux AUR, Arch User Repository. And all the fun stuff is coming from there. Uh, so we're downloading all these updates and sometimes it's, it goes wrong, these updates. And often you'll find a information Maybe I should show you that again. By the way, this is the Sardi colors. You see the Sardi arc folders. So control H. This is, yeah, let's first get rid of that. Control H. You see, this is the other, well, arc theme. Talking about arc themes, I need to remember and write it down to tell you later on something about arc themes. So that said, um, I wanted to go here oh, yeah, for the fixes. So on articlinux.com, there is a fixes menu. If something happens, if, and often it's just knowledge sharing again, often it's simply too simple to, to fix and all that. And it's um, just making sure that you get all the knowledge available to have a running system and have as much fun and as less frustration as possible. Solutions are here. Read the articles, follow the video, and you will become just smarter. It's as simple as that. ArcLinuxD.com, don't forget him. There are also fixes over here on ArcLinux.com and check them out as well. Okay, so that's that. He's doing his work. The themes, let's talk about the themes. No, themes for later, I've written that down. Let's check 
and have a look at our bin folder. Well, let's have maybe a little bit of fun as well. You have now a new script and it's a nice script. Thanks to Raniel, we have found this. It's a bonsai. And it's going to be each time another bonsai. A little application and it's incredible how smart this is uh, created and built. So it's not from us, we just found it online, but we have incorporated in our fun scripts here. So that's that. But the stay rolling is of course more important. You want to go to from February to March and in here is exactly what you need. So a lot of things happened in a month's time. It's, it's always like that, that's life. like that. So the papyrus icon theme has been orphaned, means nobody is going to take care of it anymore. So we say let's get rid of it, RS, remove, and all its dependencies and gone. But there is a papyrus icon theme package in the standard Arch Linux repos. So we're reinstalling, not a Git version, but the normal version, let's say. Redshift has been installed because of a fix that we've done, so Redshift can work again. And this is a very special one. I've been using it for several months. Remember catfish that could find all things, could find a word for instance inside all the files, inside it, not the titles, but reading the, the contents of uh, articles or scripts or anything. Well, this does the same thing. The platinum searcher bin is actually a command called pt, platinum pt, right? And then you search for anything like pt Spotify. And I'll, I'll see where is that word coming in all my scripts. So I know where to change it. I've been using it a lot and it's actually very, very practical. So it's on the ISO now. We have also created a new Vimix theme. We should do that as well, Eric. Grub. Okay, and uh, we are going to remove the application or the package for HP printers. So if you do have an HP printer, don't remove it. You get the time to say no, but uh, you can also delete the line here as well at this point in time. So this is what we're gonna do. Now it's time to install it. So this one goes out. You are orphaned and we get in the standard repo. Well, the standard package from the standard repo, right? Something like that. Platinum and Redshift. Do you want Redshift? You can decide yes, no. Okay, that's up to you. Yes. This one has been built. It's from Yay. I mean, it's from AWAR. Doesn't take long and it's not big. Try it out. You'll be amazed. HPLib is out. So if you don't have an HP printer, well, you can remove it. If you do have an HP, well, keep it in. So I'm going to remove it. And that's that. So we are we have exactly the same packages as on the ISO of March. That's the point, really. Stay rolling, stay having exact the same thing. So that's why I need, still need to do a lot of things. Let's take a look at Arch Linux Hello. There is more information that's often used by um, the beta test. Oh, it's here by the beta testers, but it can be also, it's here, it's online. You can read it, right? So in the 1903 version, this is all the things that changed and you stop reading at 1903.1. Where do we stop reading? Here, I guess. And all these things have been changed. We have 101 Plank themes installed. We have XMO bar developed for Polybar. We have all these uh, icons with new icons that we have created, the Mint Y icons. So a lot of things. Ooh, I should make this better. Super T I've told about. That's mine. Thinking about... Uh, Nemo, mine, 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 mine. Plank has lesser icons, that's done. Grub, we should do our grub. The lock theme is changed, it's true. 
but we need to fix the log theme. Yeah, the log theme is still the same. So if you really want to be rolling, some of the things have to be done manually. All right, is he has problems with Conkilua Archer? That's fine, we'll skip that one. So if things like this happen, it doesn't mean anything is broken on Arch Linux or Arch Linux. It's because some of the things that are described in the package build from this particular package is wrong. Let's keep it very simple. It's just wrong. Now the, the, the maintainer, the person who made the package build, which is actually just a recipe how to make a package, right? This package. Uh, he's, he's working probably on it. He's, he's, it's out of, he's, he's uh, updating it, trying to figure it out, or there is something changed. It's dependent on somebody else, on somebody else's uh, package. And it's a consequence like Domino. So one, if one changes, the other one needs to change with it. So it, it takes time, like I say, one, two, three days, and you'll see the Conkilua arches will be there. But this is just about the very, very last edition. You'll see that everything is still working in your system. It just means that you don't have the very last number version, but everything will be just fine. So let's keep that for, for later maybe, otherwise the video will become too big. And so my point to you is two things. If ha this happens, one, wait for it, wait, just sit it out. And two, if you wanna be act uh, proactive, then you go to the AOR, to the website, make an account and you can flag it out of date. You can and the developer gets a message, a mail, hey, your package is out of date. And it says, oh yeah, oh, this is true. I can't build it anymore. And it's gonna fix it. So that's, uh, that's all you need to do actually. But there are tutorials, you know me, um, you can also build it yourself. You have lots of uh, tutorials, for instance, on this one, arclinuxiso.com. It's basically at this point in time, just about package building. So if you want to figure out how does a package build work, this recipe, and it's actually just one menu for this time, but we'll make it this project also in the future. But here we can learn a lot about package building. Okay, So that's basically it. When something goes wrong in the AUR, it's the package build that needs to be fixed. And then, um, I think the best thing to do is to follow along this, not this. I deleted what I wanted to do back to here. That's the fastest way. And then go to the beta version and follow this. So the first thing we need to explain to you is we did a lot of work, which is scripting actually. So my computer worked harder than me. You see the articles on artlinks.com. We've made new themes, arc themes, and it's based on Arco Linux, the work of Nico Hood, and that's why it says Nico behind it. So we have two people. We have uh, Horst3180 who started Arc Theme, which is the theme we're using, the look we have, all the the, the blue thing and all that. That's what what uh, Horst did. Also made a beautiful. Uh, um, folders like these guys, these blues guys are from Horst. And now Nico Hood has taken over and we're going to install the, well, the successor, right? And it says, of course, it's since it's the same art theme and the same names and all that, uh, the one can go, the other comes in. Yes, you say. So the old version is out and you do see that Nico has, well, it needs a little bit, little bit more uh, space for the same themes, but as long as, I, as they work, I don't mind. Um, but basically it's indeed almost doubled in size. But hey, uh, as long as the theme is beautiful and it's all again for free guys, don't forget. Okay, so we have new themes in, the Arc Themes Nico. So we can have a look at it. Maybe let's combine it with the other project. I always do. The other project is actually down there, I will see it later. And it's called sudo pacman minus s sardi. At some point in time, I had, uh, I've made a tutorial 
about Mint, Linux Mint, I think it's 19.1, I think it is, with i3. I always say, think out of the box, right? i3 can run on anything. And I keep updating these, uh, well, scripts and the way how to get i3 running on Linux Mint. And I saw that Mint, uh, Linux Mint had beautiful icons and they are coming from, again, Horst 3180. But they've always known these guys. We've always known these blue guys, which is beautiful. But suddenly on Linux Mint, I saw the, a pink one and a, a darker blue one and a red one and all that. I said, ooh, that's nice. So I made new packages, package build, right? And I've, I've made so these choices now. You can, if we have, for instance, the Sardi, this is the Sardi and there is Sardi Colora, Sardi Flat, you know the difference in, in, in Sardi icons. So when I install Sardi Mint Y icons Git, I'm actually getting more icons in. Not much, I mean, three megabytes, it's nothing, but it is also nothing. It's just the folders for the places. So if you go to um, appearance and then to icons, and then you have here with a dash, so it's more to the down. Let's um, open that up. You have now this. This is all Arco, um, I mean Horst's uh, work. But it gives us some variation, right? With this gray and this gray wallpaper, looks nice. So brown, blue, whatever mood you're in. I, I'm kind of like this one, this Sardimint Aqua. So let's choose that one. I have, of course, an idea. Remember the, all the arc themes that we've installed, the, the ones from Nico? Okay. I have created one more. Well, two more actually. And one of them is the Arc Aqua. So this blue is now going together with that blue. That's the idea. And I'd rather get it dark. And the other one I've created was pink. So this was the pink from the icons. And that's all explained on uh, arcolinux.com in design. This is designing, how to design your own uh, desktop. And in this case, we've learned you how to make your own arc theme. You can choose 16 million colors. Just run scripts, you get a new arc theme that goes with your wallpaper, conky, icon, whatever, but yours. Let's go back to the aqua. Sorry, so set the arc. Oh yeah, no. The idea was to go to this one and then combine it with that one. Like so. And you have your own setting. And it changes. If the color do not change, does not change immediately. There is a trick sometimes you need to say to Tunar, even, even if Tunar is already now closed, you think it's not. So minus Q to be really sure it's closed and then start it again and you'll have all the calls you need i see something red trash voila so that's um designing we've been busy in designing talking about designing i already know what's going to be next pseudo pacman minus s we have an arco linux grub theme so we've been working with the developer of Vimix and we've asked, please, can you add uh, our Arco Linux icons to it? And in this case, we've already installed it. Remember the, the script we just ran? So we don't need to do it again. So it's, it's installed, but it's not working. Okay, let's make it work. So grub customizer, super easy application, wants to be root. Needs to write in, in the etc boot, so yeah, he needs to be root. And all you need to know is appearance, themes, Femix, save, done. That was super technical. We have now a beautiful grub. That's that. We need also to think about the slimlock. Like I said, we have been theming. So this is the old one. We go to Thunar File Manager, File System, 
etc slim there is a slim conf and a slim conf pack new now i can open this folder as um, I, I can do it like this so these two guys need to be updated i can do like this and then compare right and then you see that this is my own so that's okay and here is default user empty so that's also okay and we've switched the theme to ice current theme ice and it's no longer transfer now we're looking at transfer and if we change it it's going to be ice that's basically it it's nothing more than that but you need to change it here but i can't change anything here it's not possible since it's on and protected part of the system now you can do two things you can say okay i'm gonna open the folder as root and say this is me root right type in the password and then go to there and say okay this is where is it again slim 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 these two guys and you can change it the other day i was um well i was another system and i said I did something like this. That's also possible. Say sudo melt slim.conf and slim.conf something else, right? Pack new. That's going to work as well. He's going to boot up a sudo in melt and he's going to load up two files. Whoops, that's not like this. I close up to, oh did i close it oh my god okay back again what am i doing back again so arrow up arrow up <sighs> of course he's now pointing to etc go in here and start from here then of course this will work it's, it does not have a hard-coded path, it's just a relative path. All right, anyway, had to be an ETC to do that, that's it. So default user, Eric, I'm gonna leave that. See at the top what we're talking about. This is just a backup, well, well actually, the new configuration that we sent to you, right? The new stuff is here, back new. But don't override it. I'm still Eric, right? Default user, I'm not gonna change that. I am however gonna change, go to ice and forget about this transfer. So transfer is out, ice is in and then control S for save and that's it. When I do super L, it's gonna be this. You hate it, you like it, change it any way you see fit. You see there are many more other choices to, to choose from. So that's our lock screen. Okay, then um, something else, let's um, go out. Let's exit, 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 log out. That's also something we've done. We've changed the login screen. So let, if we talk about chronology, let's maybe do that then. Eh? restart we need to figure out our grub is grub working we've changed a lot in designing this is the first thing that we you come across that's the first design thing then you come in the login screen which we skip because we auto login but you just saw it's gonna be this dark blue pink login screen then we come in a new wallpaper then we come in new icons and we get uh, another folder icons you can add themes you can add icons so a lot has changed theming wise okay what else has changed let's go back to our beta page so the themes is done bonsai you saw it it's a nice little thing bash rc whoa good question eric and just it just pops in my mind ctrl h 
is these are these two guys the same did we make something did we change something compare files are identical whatever cool so from time to time do check if we made new aliases this is the one that's always going to be the latest and, and this is yours remember there's also the possibility to make a bash rc personal which i need because i rarely type update and i often type update or something different but i can say this is an alias to update and then it's fixed your typo becomes an actual command with an alias just uh, for laughs but hey i do use it okay uh -huh. okay four workspaces i didn't say anything about discord i think but do join us on discord you'll find us find us here arclinux.info go to the editions control find discord here's how to install it and here's your invitation okay come and have a chat calamara's new version rebranding that's the most important thing which you can't see of course since we do not do a clean install but you can these days now have the option these are all the the screenshots you have but this is the most important one you can decide now to have no swap swap no hibernate is a little bit of this yellow thing the swap and swap with hibernate is as much as we have now but i use no swap since i have 16 gigabyte i do hope that's enough for any operating system to run to cope with it so rebranding a lot of rebranding the grub the light the end the wallpapers yeah you see the wallpapers right Calamari is teaming as well. Oh, typo, grub team. Um, we have done that, we've shown that. The lock screen, lock theme has been changed. Here's the grub picture. Plank has lesser icons, we've done that. Arc Linux D is of course following everything. So the same screenshot, Super T, you know about that. I've made a lots of um, new package builds will explain it probably later on so it has been rewritten to be more efficient basically when we go to phase six and we are going to explain how to build your own arch linux iso from scratch package building is of the essence so we need to have it fully tweaked and themed and efficient and then lazy so it should be easy applications removed we've done that Platinum search bin is in, we've set that uh, as well. Sardi and Surfen, we have the mint Y icons. So all these icons have been added. It doesn't matter really. This is Deeping, this is XFCE. An icon is an icon. And here are all the choices you get. Xmonad for the people who are in, in phase three already and going for different kind of desktops, not XFCE, OpenBox or i3. Then this is a different kind of bar a menu a panel that you can have to um, well on this xmona system it's interesting to know that there is also a package sudo pacman minus s arc linux xmonad so there is this package which is going to disappear so now maybe you have this one so change do change to polybar which is exactly the same thing as that one because we've uh, since we've now two bars we needed two packages and i've renamed it so you know this is polybar if you want it and this is xmo bar so again this is going away choose and if you're going for XMO bar, you need some stuff, your, your new new stuff, check updates, AOR. It's a, an application that sees, okay, six updates for AOR, that's it. But it's in the panel, so you need the software for it. The same as G Simple Cal, the calendar, and of course, XMO bar itself. If you stay rolling, you need to do all this. If you install, if download an ISO and install XMONAD, it will be there. 
there is uh, new themes. That's true. I haven't uh, haven't said anything about the theming. So it's also nice. Always nice to get some more choices. So at some point in time, I don't know. I think it's these guys, Mac OS. I think these guys are new. Well, now you see them. I think these are the guys, Mac OS, all kind of coloring. So okay, fine. More choices, 17 choices more. I think these are all the choices you'll ever see. Animated GIF. And that's it. That's it. Let me see. I wrote down arc themes. I wrote down grub. So fine. You are up to date. And there is one thing that I always forget, but not this time. ETSC LSB release. Let's type that again. LSB release. But guys, this is just a number, just text file. I can make it any text I like. But basically, we are now on 3.3. .3. Save. All right, this is the complete video. I hope it was educational because that's always our point. Besides having fun, um, learning is our major core business. All right, cheers.